Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and today I want to explain to you all the differences between the different Distress Inks, Distress Oxide, all these products from Ranger that are on the market. Now Craftstash do stock a lot of these and you can see I've got the full speckled egg collection. Um, the speckled egg was the latest colour release but there's been so many different colours released and of course with all the different names, different styles of liquid, so we've got inks, we've got paints, we've got embossing glazes as well, um, it can be really confusing actually what does what. So that's what I'm going to explain to you today, I'm going to work through each of the products and tell you what the properties are and how they compare to other very similar looking products within the Distress range. So first of all, probably the most popular ones are the ink pads. Now I've got a few here, I've actually got loads of them in my craft room. I've just picked out a couple here so that I can compare. So I've actually got the weathered wood in both the oxide and the ink, and I've got the milled lavender there in the oxide and the ink as well. Now when we take a look at these, let's just take the lids off. So straight away you can already see one is actually lighter than the other. So they are both reactive with water, so if that's what you're looking to do, you can use either of these. They both blend as well beautifully, although in my opinion one does blend better than the other, we'll come to that in a little while. Um, with each of these you're going to get a slightly different finish though. So if I put these on a piece of white paper, so this is the ink, you've got a nice dark saturated colour there. Okay. Now if I do the same with the oxide, the oxide is usually a matte and chalkier finish. As you can see that's not quite as dark. Now let's do the same on a darker colour cardstock. So let's start with the ink. So this is more of a translucent, translucent finish. So the ink actually soaks into the paper and the colour doesn't show up quite as bright. Now let's do the same with the oxide and you can really see that colour come through. So the oxide has a lot more opacity to it and it has a chalky matte finish. Okay, They both dry, um, they dr both take long enough to dry so that you can emboss with them. Personally I prefer to emboss with the oxides because they don't pull on the rubber stamp the way that the inks do, not quite as much. So there's first of all the first differences. You can see the finish is more chalky with the oxide and it shows up better on dark colours. But if you're looking for a bright colour, something that really stands out, you want to be going for the ink on the lighter papers. So it's really your choice which one you're working with. Now coming back to this one, you'll see that they're both reactive with water. So I'm just taking a water spray bottle and you can see you can reinvigorate them like so. Both, in my opinion, both equally as well. I think they work beautifully together and you can do this across the entire range of the Distress inks and the Distress Oxides. So there really isn't much in the way of a difference with that. Saying that though, I have found that with the Oxide, you get more of a smooth finish to the watercolour effect once you've sprayed it with water. Um, and with the ink, the ink it seems to soak into the paper, whereas the oxide sits on top. So much as when you put the ink directly to the paper and don't wet it, you do still get that uh, less translucent, that more opaque finish, even after spraying with water with the oxide. So now we're going to have a look at blending these together. You might be thinking about creating beautiful backgrounds. So I'm going to take the Distress Ink in both the Milled Lavender and the Weathered Wood and blend a little bit of these in. I'm going to put down a craft mat underneath just to protect my surface. So I'm going to load up my foam applicator with the ink. Now this is quite a pale ink, but we'll be able to see. So that goes on there and that's quite a nice blend. I mean, milled lavender is a pale colour, okay? But what I find with the ink, because it's almost thinner, it seems to soak into the paper quite quickly and you can risk getting these lines. Now let me just blend from the other side using the weathered wood ink. And again, although I'm using a foam applicator and I'm using 
a it's a watercolor paper but it's a smooth paper we have a few lines there so I can come back with this one and I can blend that it's quite nice it's it's quite nice to blend through but those colors are quite pale there okay so not a bad blend at all we have got some streaks and some marks in there and if you're going for a distressed look that's perfect of course now I'll quickly show you something you can do with distress inks is just spray a little water into your hand and you can flick it onto the ink afterwards give that just a few moments to settle while I put these away and you'll see what's starting to happen I'll lift this up in a moment we're getting almost a dilution of the ink where the water's sitting and the colour is darker around the outside of those wet patches. So if I take a piece of kitchen towel now and I just soak up, you can air dry or you can heat dry this rather than lifting off with the kitchen towel. But you can see there, we've lifted off some of the colour and that's that water reactive property that distress oxides and distress inks all hold. And really that's what they're very much known for. So that's the ink blending. Now on a different piece of paper, I'm coming to the oxides. So I'll do the same again. So taking lots of ink onto my foam pad. Now with this one, I've got a creamier consistency. So actually blending this feels much smoother, in my opinion. This is, like I say, this is quite a, um, a pale color, the milled lavender. And then just taking some of the excess ink off of this so I can use the weathered wood. Maybe I should have used a couple of darker colors for this. But you can see how much deeper and darker this is in comparison to the ink on the white paper. And it feels much creamier, like I say, to be able to move around and blend smoothly. So now I'm just taking my purple again, my milled lavender, going back over this line. Now I've got a very light touch here, but that is blending absolutely beautifully. And besides where my finger marks have been, because the ink hasn't yet dried, and you can speed this up by heating it if you wish, that is a much smoother finish. Okay, now if that's what you're looking for, the smooth, creamy consistency, then the oxides are perfect. If you do want that rougher texture, then I would go for the inks. And I will just show you as well, the same as we did before. Just popping some water on there, allowing that to sit for a little while. Just maybe, um, maybe let it sit for a minute. That will do as much work, as much um, transformation as it's going to do and then I'll lift that water up. So there you can see very similar but I do feel that the water doesn't make quite as much of an effect on the oxide as it does on the ink. The next product in the ranges that I'll look at with you is the Distress Spray. So we have the Spray Stain and the Oxide Spray. Essentially, they are a very similar ink to the ones that you get in the ink pads. But of course, in a bottle with a spray applicator and slightly more fluid. So of course, they work with the spray applicator there. Now, if I just have a look closely at this, you'll be able to see already that is more of a creamy consistency. And this will need shaking because it will settle. So you can hear inside there, you've got that ball inside, so you'll need to shake it. Whereas with the ink, you don't really need to do that. It's so fluid and so much thinner that that remains um, mixed all the time. So let's just spray each of these because the properties are very similar once they're sprayed. It depends what sort of look you're going for. So on this side, I will spray the ink. We've really got quite a dark color there. That's now soaking into the paper. And give this a shake. Always shake it really with this tightly screwed on, ideally with the cap on as well. 
there we go so you can see the color difference there if I just pop this down we've actually got a darker color more of an ink as you know it a white ink and this is more like a chalky paint so they are the difference between the two now yet again these are going to react with water okay you can reinvigorate them if you want to with water as well later on you don't have to work with them with the water whilst they are still wet you can wait for them to dry and then you can come in with your water afterwards and lift up the color and move the color about a little bit more as well but i'll just show you so let's spray this with water and spray this one with water now straight away you can see that lighten up i'm going to give that a few minutes to settle then I'm going to dry that with a heat gun and come back and show you what the finished dried result looks like. So just coming back to this now it's dried. This is the oxide and this is the ink spray. So the um, distress stain spray or spray stain, sorry. So with this one, you can see the colors kind of soaked into the paper there. So you can see the texture of the paper through it. If you had a stamped image or something underneath this, you would still see that stamped image through quite clearly. There's a translucency to the, the ink. This side, you can almost feel the ink on there or the spray on there, and it has got this chalky paint finish. So you can see the paint sitting on the top. It hasn't sunk into the paper the way that this one has, the stain has. And if you did have a stamped image on here, you would partially cover that because of the opacity of the finish. So we've got that very matte finish to this. Now, just for comparison, I'm going to show you as well what the two look like on a craft piece of paper as we did with the ink pads. So first of all, the Distress Stain. You can see there, this is um, Speckled Egg that's quite dark on there which actually matches really well with the um, the weathered wood ink pad there and then in comparison there's that oxide now with the oxide what happens is the moment that the liquid is released from its bottle or its pad it starts reacts reacting with the oxygen in it is it's oxidizing itself and that's what gives it that chalky finish but there is no chalk in the inks or the paints or any of the products okay so you can really clearly there on the darker color see how you would actually finish with an effect that's more chalky with the oxide so i've just used a heat gun to quickly dry those two inks off there so you can really see the difference now this is very very subtle this the um spray stain there is very subtle it's soaked into the darker cardstock but of course there you can really see that oxide spray lifted up sitting on top of the cardstock there now within the range we also have reinkers and these come in both the um, oxide and the distress ink which is the more fluid one here so these are used for different reasons um, first and foremost, they are used to reinvigorate, reactivate your ink pad. So when they start to get a bit dried up, a few drops of this, move it around with a foam pad, you're good to go. You've got a virtually new ink pad. So they're well worth investing in. When you buy an ink pad, grab one of these as well at the same time to coordinate. Make sure, of course, if you're getting an oxide and if you're getting an ink, you go for the correct ones. Now let's also use the droppers and pop a piece into a palette. So. The ink is more liquid. This one has the dropper there. Now that looks like a black. You can't tell what color that is at the moment. This needs mixing, needs shaking. As with the oxide sprays, you need to prevent that separation before you use it. And you can hear there's a ball inside of there to help you with that. So it'll shake each time you use it. Again, just a few drops on here and you can clearly see what color that is, okay? Now each of these will react with water. So you can take a paintbrush, I'll just take quite a large one here and you can, I'm going to put some water in here, wet my paintbrush and you can use these directly as they are to paint or you can come in with a little bit of water. You can see there if I drag that ink out you can see there that you can use water to water this down a little bit or a lot if you wish there and you could then paint with this if you wanted to in the same way as you would a watercolor paint which is really handy now just clean my brush off and use some clean water for the oxide 
again you can mix it with water you can make it even more fluid if you want to but the color doesn't change quite as much with the distress ink when you mix water with it you get that paler and paler color you do so a little bit with the oxide but nowhere near as much but you can still watercolor with this you can use water to mix it and move it around the same way as you would if you were watercolor painting now of course if you are watercolor painting with these you're going to get that matte finish with the oxide you're going to get that that normal paint finish it's not a gloss but it's certainly not the chalky finish with the ink just two more products to go through with you we have the paints as well so the Distress Paint is an acrylic paint, so it's water-based. And what I love about this is that it will go on multiple surfaces. So you can work on plastic, on wood, on metal, of course, on paper, um, acrylic, um, things like that. So acetate and, and such like. And you're always going to get that chalky finish. Okay, so if I take a sheet of our paper, again, we need to shake this. So give it that rattle. And then just a few drops on here so it's it's quite a thin acrylic paint i've known many other acrylic paints to really be um quite thick and gloopy this one's nice and thin i'm just going to use my finger because i like to get messy and it really is a, a less expensive way of creating that chalky finish now before that's dry i can come in with some water as you can see and I can do some different effects with that. So I've just sprayed it there to water it down on one side. I've put a few little blobs of water this side. That will still show much in the same way as we did with the ink pads. That will kind of almost dilute the paint a little bit. So you can add to your, your different textures and your surfaces by just adding a spray of ink there with the water before it dries. Now, if I just whiz this dry for you, you'll be able to see that finished look. So that's all dry now, and you can see that we've actually got this chalky finish. Now, over here on the right-hand side, this is where I sprayed it with water quite heavily whilst it was still wet. And we had that reaction where it blended with the water nicely, and we've actually got, despite the fact this is a messy paint splodge um, spread with my finger, we've got a nice watercolour bleed through there so you can really um, do this all over you can get some nice ombre effects as well if you want to um, I also flicked or sprayed a little bit of water in this area you can see this blotchiness that we've got but you could really go to town with that and do that a lot lot more if you wanted to by spraying the entire surface adding some big blobs of water with your fingers um, much the same way as we did with this and allow it to react but with these paints, with these distress paints, you do need to work with them while they are still wet. They will only react with water whilst they are wet. Once the paint has dried, the genius thing is it's now waterproof. Okay, so now we can do our layering. Now we can put, say, a crackle paint over the top and it will not mix and it will not affect, it will not reactivate this layer underneath. So if I just show you, I'm going to spritz this with some water because that paint is now dry and we've got that chalky finish to it. I'm going to take a piece of, I'm letting that sit for a moment to see if that will make any difference. Piece of clean kitchen towel there. Lift off that water there. And you can see, despite my, my towel being wet, there's absolutely no paint has transferred. This is completely waterproof. We can go in with whatever colors and things we want over the top of this now. The very last product that I want to talk you through is the embossing glaze. So again, quite a new product, absolutely beautiful. Now this is not a very opaque embossing powder. You're not going to be able to emboss this with clear embossing paint onto, sorry, ink onto a black piece of paper and be able to see it. It will be a glaze, not a solid color. And I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, I'm going to take my dis my Distress um, Embossing Ink, which is just an embossing ink. Doesn't have all the major properties that you'd expect from anything that's distressed. It's just within the range. I'm going to ink this up really nice and wet. Now this is just a really old stamp, as you can see by the color. I'm going to stamp that there. I think my um, my embossing ink needs reinvigorating now. It's getting a bit dried out. I'm just placing that all the way over. It's nice soft um, 
powder is a very fine powder as you can see because it's so fine you get a really perfect um, impression there so you don't get stray bits it's nice and dry and um, it sticks to the detail really well now I'm just going to heat set this there you go so we've got that glaze there I don't know how well you can see the shine because it's quite a bright day here but we've got a glaze to it um, of course it's raised up but it's not really raised up because it's a fine powder um, not a thick one but um, with that you can see the color on white now, if I take a darker piece of cardstock, so let's come back to our craft cardstock that we've been using and do exactly the same thing. You'll be able to see that color difference. So there's the difference. Now we've lost the color. We have a glaze. We have a very slight, certainly to my eye, a very slight green tinge to this, bluey greeny tinge. Essentially, it just looks like a wet glaze. You can see the shine there. But then with the white version, you can clearly see the color, but it is pale. It's a pastel color. It's got that almost that matte look to it, but in the glaze. So it's a, a pastel color, not a very bright, vivid color. So that's how the embossing glazes work. But as an embossing powder, if you're going onto a white or very pale color background, I would absolutely recommend these, be surely because they are such a fine powder, the detail in them is beautiful. So hopefully that's talked you through lots of these different products that we've got in the distress range and helps you to understand what you're going to be using for what projects so have a look at all the different colors that we've got on craft stash and i do believe at the time of filming this there may be a little bit of an offer for you going ahead which involves the new collectors pins as well so these enamel pins are so much fun to collect so far there's been um i think there's six colors released but there will be more and more and of course as new colors come out as well they will then be creating the pins in these um, this one's my favorite at the moment the speckled egg the newest color release um, but i'm definitely going to be getting my hands on all of them i hope this has helped i will see you again very soon with another tutorial take care everybody Bye bye